Well, good afternoon and welcome here to San Antonio, Texas, the campus of Trinity University and the Leslie Robinson Thanksgiving Classic, day number two. And today it is Birmingham Southern, the Panthers, up against Southwestern, the Pirates. And starting lineups already taking place for the visiting Birmingham Southern Panthers for this game. It'll be Paul Fitzgerald, Cameron Glover, Jay Gillespie, Christian Stewart, and Evan Sigler for the Panthers. And for the Pirates, Josh Jones, Jacob Hester, Chris Smith Jr., Kyle Persky, and Brock Leichtefeld. And both teams playing yesterday, both games, both teams coming off of a loss and looking to get back on the winning track today against each other. One of these teams will leave here with a victory. The other one will continue a losing streak. I'm joined by Luke Terry. And, Luke, you saw both of these teams yesterday. Your thoughts for today? Yeah, Josh. I mean, both of these teams really struggled in that game, in their games, respectively, yesterday. This is a Southwestern team that seemed to be in it against Carlson College all game, but just really couldn't push over the top at any point. But this is a Birmingham Southern side that was really frustrated the entire way against Trinity. So it'll be interesting to see how each team comes out today. It should be a good one between the two. It's going to be Birmingham Southern in the black, Southwestern in the white. Or excuse me, go the opposite way. Southwestern in the black and Birmingham Southern in the white. And that one overthrown, and that'll be an over and back against the Pirates. Just underway here, first half of a two-game set. Later on, it'll be Trinity and Carlton, kind of in a de facto tournament championship game. It's more of a classic format. And so, just kind of worked out that way for this one. Kick out for Birmingham Southern, and that is Fitzgerald knocking down the tray. And more outside shooting working against the Pirates. Carlton did it to them yesterday. We'll see what Birmingham Southern has for today. Yeah, and a great start there for Birmingham Southern. Something that we saw them go to a lot was playing out of the post. We saw the pass go down low to Stewart. He found the open shooter on that right wing. Another shot coming now. That one from Sigler is a little bit short. Pirates come back the other way, but a good start to knock down one of two compared to yesterday when the Panthers started one for 10 from the three-point line. It's going to be Smith for three for Southwestern. That one's a little long. Sigler with the board. And he'll push forward opposite wing. Now working down for Stewart. And it is Stewart getting inside, but a nice job by Lactafelt coming over, swatting. What, if it was a shot, it's a block. And if it was a pass, just swatting it into the open floor. And he hustles down, gets on the low block, and has Southwestern's first two of the game. Yeah, just great recognition by Leichtfeld right there. Understood that he had the smaller Sigler on him in the post, backed him down, got underneath the basket, and went up strong for the finish. Now Stewart working on Leichtfeld again, and another block for Leichtfeld. Yeah. Esther and Jones working the top now for Southwestern. Yesterday we saw them go through Persky a lot through their offense. So far, hasn't gotten very many touches so today, and that is Jones knocking down the jumper, hitting the glass. And then on the other side, Birmingham Southern, it's Glover for three, no good. Chasing down the board is going to be Gillespie. Kicks back out for Sigler. Wide open look, can't make it fall. Again, Gillespie with the rebound, but he's going to travel, and it'll be a turnover back to the Pirates. Yeah, but two quick offensive rebounds from Gillespie on that possession. One thing that I think is important to note is that this is a Birmingham Southern side that really is going to look to be physical down low in the post today. I think they have an advantage there that they couldn't take advantage of yesterday. And like the foul, wide open as they beat the press. Now a 6-3 lead. Six in a row now for the Pirates. Fitzgerald on the near wing, kicks back over. As Glover driving inside, he'll look for Stewart inside. Can't get the first to fall. Might have been fouled there, no call. It's going to be Smith coming up with it, and he'll run. And he's got Persky running the floor wide open. That's 8-3. 
And we'll see if we get a timeout here from uh, Coach Graves or if he's just going to wait and do a mass substitution as we see five new Panthers waiting to enter on the next dead ball. Sigler, corner three, knocks it down, and just like that, it's 8-6. And they're going to say two-point bucket, must have had a foot on the line. Yeah, it certainly hurts there, but good for Sigler to see one go in early on in this game. He came off the bench yesterday, shot four for eight from deep. Those were his only attempts on the day. So certainly an effort from this Birmingham Southern side to insert some more three-point shooting into the game earlier on. Yeah, great defense from Stewart on Lachtefeld, forcing the turnaround jumper, and now might see the reverse of it down here. Stewart going against Lachtefeld. Gets into the paint. And Lachtefeld returns the favor on defense. Gillespie goes up with it after grabbing the board, and he is fouled. He'll go to the line. Yeah, and so far a lot of physical play down low on this end of the court. Southwestern's done a good job of pushing these Birmingham Southern big men outside of the painted area. Timeout on the floor, and I'm sure most of you over in Birmingham are already aware, but things not looking good in the second round of the football playoffs, and we here at Trinity definitely feel your pain having played UMHB last week, but the Panthers in the second round after having defeating Huntington at home last week on the wrong side of a 35-7 score in the fourth quarter against the Crusaders. And Southwestern obviously familiar with them as Belton just a short 30-40 to 40 minute drive away from Georgetown. Two and six on the year for the Pirates. And the Panthers coming in at two and three. And looking to see if the stats get updated. They're missing a bucket for Southwestern. So we'll see if that gets corrected here before too long. But the score on your screen is correct. Eight five in favor of the Pirates. And two teams that are basically black, yellow, and white. Both nicknames starting with P. Should be nice and fun for the announcing crew today. Gillespie's first free throw goes in and out. And the first free throw of the afternoon for either team is missed by the Panthers. Can't get the second to fall. Like the will pull down the board for Southwestern. And Smith will push it up to Jones. Back to Smith, top of the key. Get you caught up on the subs here in just a minute for Birmingham Southern as Gillespie pulls down the board. Yeah, and that was the first real attempt that we've seen from Persky on the day. It was pretty decisive in his move to the basket, just really good defense when he got to the rim from this Birmingham Southern squad. Gillespie will have a seat. Now we've got a fresh five out here for Birmingham Southern. And it'll be Sam Spence, Jaquan Williams, Colin Glover. As that pass is deflected and taken in by Williams. A quick two to draw the Panthers within one. Also out there is Caleb Green. And the final substitution was Josh Childers. Yeah, Josh, and very early on, we see that the Panthers opt to return to that full court pressure that they applied early on in the game yesterday against Trinity. A tactic that actually kind of played to the Tigers' advantage, but one turnover already leading directly to a bucket. So we'll see if Southwestern can figure out a way to deal with that pressure in the full court. Childers had one go in and out. And the Pirates looking to extend the one-point lead. Smith taken down into the corner by Spence. Finds Lachtefeld, and he gets past Childers, making a three-point lead for the Pirates, and that's four for Lachtefeld. Yeah, and Lachtefeld hasn't been used a whole lot in a post-up position in this game, but 
We saw earlier on he recognized a disadvantage, an advantage that he had on the block, and we've seen him cut to the basket really well a couple a couple of times. So using his size and his mobility in a in a different manner so far in this one. Yeah, and with that, Zach Black's going to come in and replace Lactafeld, give him a breather. And now we've got a foul here on Williams for the Panthers as Smith was trying to dribble past. Zach Black putting in quite a few minutes yesterday. Kind of did a double spell where he was spelling Persky and Lactafeld at different times. And then we have Hannah checking in as well for the Pirates. Preston Hannah, who was a key cog at times yesterday for Southwestern as Persky knocks down the three. That pushes the lead to six. Persky very decisive there. Talked about it. He was at his best yesterday when he was catching the ball and making a decision immediately, whether that was pulling up from long range or attacking the basket right away. We saw at the end of that game him get a little indecisive, a lot of dribbling on the outside without really going anywhere, and it seemed to hurt the Pirates deep into that contest. Glover back iron three, no good. Rebounded by Persky, and Hester will kick out for Hannah. Left wide open, look for three, knocks it down. 16-7, the Pirates out in front. Yeah, and really great ball movement for this Pirate side right now. Saw the ball stick in their hands a little bit at times yesterday, trying to force the action through individual players, but they've been much better on this weekend when they've moved the ball around. And another long two here from the Panthers. That time Glover got the shooter's touch on the rim as that looked like it was gonna bounce out and then just kind of settled itself and fell. Smith gives up for Hester. And foul is gonna be on Glover. As more substitutions looking to come back in. It looks like another full line change here for the Panthers, but it'll be Sam Lacey checking in for Southwestern as he goes in for Smith. And Chris Smith Jr. departing. No points on the board, but he was all over the floor. The other side for this Panthers team. Luke Tuliados checks in for the first time today. Provided a spark in yesterday's action as we see Black go up over the top, finish through the contact. Tuliados checking in for the Panthers, provided a nice spark. 13 points off the bench, finish as the second leading scorer for this Panther side. So he'll certainly look to continue that here today. And Denman Kane, who's also just checked in, the senior guard out of Houston, knocking down the corner three on his first shot attempt. Yeah, and certainly a welcome sign for this Birmingham Southern side. Kane in a starting role yesterday, shot 0 for 7 from deep, so nice to see his first attempt of the day go through from that short corner. Yeah, officially in their first corner three, but they've had two that were corner twos, and that one almost falling to the wayside, but Stewart alertly coming in and picking it up. Now Kane firing back to Garrido, top of the key. He's also just checked in. And Brandon Garrido will slip it back over to Kane. They'll work the top of the key together. Marie, Martise Jackson also in the game for the Panthers. To go with Toledos and Stewart. Back to the corner. Step back three now for Kane. Back iron no good. And it's Hannah pulling down the board for the Pirates. Lacey has Persky on the run. And despite Kane's best efforts, Persky's going to have the transition bucket. Now Garrido driving inside the fouls on the floor. Don't count the basket. And a foul looks to be on Hester. And that'll take us to 11.09, the second media timeout of the day. And we'll take a quick break with them and be right back here. You're watching Birmingham Southern and Southwestern at the Leslie Robinson Thanksgiving Classic.
11.09 left here in the first half. It's going to be Birmingham Southern to inbound from underneath their own basket. And it's Garrido looking for Stewart. They'll take it near the midcourt line. So the shooting percentage is just 29% for Birmingham Southern as they are struggling offensively. Southwestern 53%. We saw pretty much the same thing in the first half for the Pirates yesterday. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Carlton. Both teams shooting over 60% in the first half. And shooting over 50% in that game collectively up until about four or five minutes left to go in that in that contest. Yeah, but for the Pirates side today, a little bit of a different reason for that high percentage. Done a great job getting out on the break and scoring in transition. Toliatos with the spin move. So he drives to the basket. He's got his first bucket. Black trying to get his second, and he does, and the lead push back to eight. Shades of Trinity Tigers basketball right here. Even on made baskets for this Birmingham Southern Tide side, excuse me, this Pirates team getting the ball quickly back down the floor. So we see Stewart with a nice up and under, kiss that one high up off the glass and finds the way through. Yeah, beautiful basket there for Stewart. And you see the full court press once again here by Birmingham Southern. Looking to disrupt Southwestern in some way, maybe force some turnovers. We haven't had much to a side so far in the first 10 minutes of this game. As Jones looks to control offensively for Southwestern. Working with Smith, but not much else movement going on. And it's Jones top of the key. Maybe it's just a two-man game. Twenty-five, sixteen, and a turnover. Just mentioned we haven't seen much. Hannah picks it up. Had a guy with him, but he's going to take it to the rack himself, and he's got a bucket. Hannah's got five on the day. And he comes back. Good defense. Gets into the passing lane and quickly gets it out ahead to Lacey. And that one's in and out. Stewart with the board. Kane, corner three, off the side of the board, no good. Yeah, just a little too deep for Kane, not corner attempt. For this Tiger side, got to be a lot happier with the effort. Excuse me, Pirate side, got to be a lot happier with the effort here today. Seem very committed to their approach, gotten out in transition and run it, and have continued to move the ball around on the perimeter. Another open shot for Hannah, just a little bit strong there, but Jones with the offensive rebound finds another cutter, but a little bit too strong. He looks to the referee, wondering why there was no call on the contact there. And Jones, once again, just picking the pocket of Martise Jackson. And another turnover. I just mentioned just two aside. Now it's six for Birmingham Southern. Four turnovers here in the last minute and a half. Zach Black with the pass to Tuliatos underneath. Only issue there is he's on the other team. Goes the distance, has it roll off the front of the rim. Lacey with the board. Mentioned as we went to the break three minutes ago that the pace of this game was fantastic. We go to the media timeout, we come back out of it, and it almost feels like everybody's forgotten how to play basketball for a brief period of time. That will probably happen as teams start to get winded here playing their second game back to back days. Another line change here for Birmingham Southern. Yeah, a couple substitutions for the Pirates themselves. Yeah, and certainly a nice way to combat that winded status and some weak legs. Full five new fresh bodies coming onto the court for the Panthers. <laughs> Hester knocks down another three on the outside for this Pirate side. Birmingham Southern team certainly going to need to start thinking about running these Pirates off the three-point line, forcing some tougher attempts on the inside, not something that we've seen a whole lot from the Pirates in the past couple of days. It's either been open shots or the, on the outside, contested shots on the outside, or open shots on the inside. They haven't had to work really, really hard on the inside. And a fantastic move and fight for Hester as he gets to the Low block, gets the long layup to fall. 
They have doubled up the Panthers here, 32 to 16. And that'll be Gillespie getting fouled by Persky, and he'll go to the line to try to complete a three-point play. Yeah, Josh, and as soon as I had said, Pirates weren't working hard for anything on the inside. Hester got all the way to the basket, finished on that nice contested layup. But right there, Gillespie with the bucket and one underneath. It seems like that's exactly what this Panther side is going to need to return to if they want to find some success offensively. Yeah, Jackson leading the way with four points right now for Birmingham Southern. It's Leichtefeld with six. Stats are missing a basket. Uh, at the moment, and they're, they're checking into that. But roughly, I mean, still, f you know, 54% shooting compared to 33% shooting. The, the shots have come up a little bit now for Birmingham Southern here since the last media timeout. The 50% three-point shooting, that's four of eight. Um, you know, two of eight on Birmingham Southern side. The other team making a free throw, just 0 of two for Birmingham Southern. Southwestern yet to go to the line. We'll see another free throw here for Gillespie when we return. You know, the rebounding's there, the assist are there. You know, it, Right now, Birmingham Southern, it, 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 I think it's just a, it's, it's shot selection and it's, it's the ability to make your shots. And I think they could be right back in into this game, even though it's a 14-point deficit at the moment. Certainly. They've had some nice open opportunities on the outside. They just haven't seen them fall through the bottom of the net. So a similar position that they saw themselves in yesterday certainly have to keep plugging along, hoping that those shots eventually will fall important not to get disheartened here and just stick with the approach they had because obviously they've had some successful opportunities to this point in the game. Yeah, yesterday Southwestern was down by 14 about this point in the first half. They clawed their way back, took the lead before trailing by five at the break. Now they find themselves up by double digits after Gillespie converts on the three-point play. And going to be a foul against Cameron Glover. And Southwestern not really sure what the inbound play was right there. That'll go for a jump ball. Looked like they were looking for one option, and that was the cut back to the basket. And it just did not materialize. I think Hester just had no choice but to throw it into the void. And Birmingham Southern will get the jump ball turnover. And Gillespie working down low on Toussaint. And it's going to be a foul on the floor. And that, that foul came before Gillespie's move to the basket. But another strong move from the big man of this Panther side. Seen that a couple possessions in a row now. Ziegler takes that corner three ball, that one off the back rim, just a little bit strong, but second opportunity here for the Panthers. We see Childers back beneath the scoreboard in that short corner. And Childers fortunate that the ball was last touched by South Southwestern because he had it in no man's land. Didn't really know what to do with it after he tucked it underneath the rim. Shot clock will be at 10. And Glover trying to get it back in. Now kick back out. Cameron Glover, corner three, got it. I was about to say Cameron Glover, who had pulled down the rebound off the Sigler miss on the last inbound play, rewarded for all of his hustle, getting the ball back, wide open look for three. And with that, a little more energy on this side of the court for the Panthers, but just a great back cut by Smith right there. Good to see him bounce up on that one. Sigler fouled him in midair, and you just hope that you land as soft as possible. There's the Cameron Glover three on the last possession. And you know, as we said earlier, I mean, if they, if they can just start getting the shots to fall, I think we'll get back into a closer, more competitive game. They're also gonna have to pick up their defensive effort. Letting Smith slip back behind everybody. A wide open look on that one. Doesn't matter how many shots you start making, if you give up easy looks down at the other end, it's gonna be a rough go for your day. And as Glover had that one deflected out. Yeah, and that make from Glover in the corner sparked some really energetic 
and competitive defense from the Panthers, but it doesn't need to occur all over the court. We saw Fitzgerald up tight on the ball handler, but Sigler got a little too aggressive on the outside, allowing Smith Jr. to slip behind him for that alley-oop. But Panthers back inside, going to pound in there. Hopefully for that side, they're going to hope that this Pirate team stops knocking down shots on the outside. Also, Porno turnovers forced right here is going to help this Birmingham Southern team out as we head towards the end of this first half. Yeah, I thought you might have had a double dribble, but they get him for the out-of-bounds. Birmingham Southern looking strong here in the last three minutes, and it's Gillespie cutting to the hole, knocking down a shot. Now Persky on the other side trying to beat the trap, and he did a good job of it. Gets the ball back. Now for his first miss, he'll have the bucket. Lead push back out to 11. You know, for Birmingham Southern, you, know, you don't need it all back instantaneously. But if you can cut the lead to four or five before the break, got to feel good about where you stand going into the locker room, and that's going to be a foul against Birmingham Southern. Their team foul number six. And Cameron second, Cameron Glover. Does another good opportunity, open look on the outside for Glover, who had just knocked one down. This is the only opportunity of that possession. Pirates last trip down the court. Persky driving to the basket. Well contested shot. He ends up getting the ball back for an even easier look in the paint area. Birmingham Southern, next next thing they're gonna have to do to draw closer in this one, limit this pirate side to to one shot per possession. Defensive rebounding is going to be incredibly important as we see Persky again with the miss, finds the rebound, puts it up and in. Caleb Green over to Colin Glover, who checked in for Cameron. Working with Spence, now to the far corner for Williams. His three no good, but Glover pulls down the board. Gets it over to Stewart, who's being contested by Persky. And the foul, I believe, on Persky. Hannah was in the area as well. And they're going to give it to Persky. Second on Kyle Persky. 16 foul again now for Southwestern. Both teams at six, so we'll be shooting the rest of the way. Bonus on the next foul is going each way. Glover gets it in for Green. And trying to work back to Glover, but he was too far into the corner and defense was too strong by Lacey. Now trying to feed inside for Stewart. Far kick out. And I'm open for a moment. Now seven seconds on the shot clock and we've got to travel. And Colin Glover. Green with the defense, and that's going to force Jones to maybe get rid of it a split second quicker than he may have wanted to, and the connection with Zach Black just not there. So timeout on the floor as we're under four. We'll take the final media timeout of the first half here from Trinity University in San Antonio. Southwestern in control of this one. They have been pretty much since the opening tip. We'll be back in just a moment. Three fifty-one left here in the first half. Southwestern thirty-nine, Birmingham Southern twenty-six. Black, Lacey, Jones, Hannah, and Toussaint in for the Pirates. Williams, Glover, Stewart, Green, and Spence. And that is 
Glover, Colin Glover, knocking down the three, bringing us to a 10-point game. Now Jones spends with the coverage, but is able to sneak out of it. Fires over to Hannah, and he gets it across to the sock. And then Lacey has it stolen away by Williams. Yeah, Williams leading the better, run. Much better defense and transition for Birmingham Southern right there. Spence with the, another three-point shot. This ball comes away to this Panthers team. And a brilliant play by Sam Lacey on defense, but he can't get the call. And we're running the other way again. Now Glover. Kick over for Williams, or they're going to say foul? Looks like a technical foul, perhaps. Um, being assessed to Sam Lacey, who continued to chirp at the referees after not getting that call. Seen him unhappy with a couple of no calls under the basket on his own end so far in the first half. Yeah, I can get his frustration. I didn't think it was an egregious foul if there was contact. I could see it being a non-call. Well, like you said, I, the, the one thing you've got to do is be able to let it go. And, and he'll have a few more minutes before the half to regain composure and come back as Hester will check back in for him. And meanwhile, Williams knocking down a pair, and we're within eight if you're a Birmingham Southern fan. Yeah, and retaining possession right here, Birmingham Southern. So far on the day, also four, excuse me, not four for eight from deep. Birmingham Southern at the moment, four for 14 from deep. Still a much better percentage than they were shooting at the start of the game yesterday against this Trinity side. But a little bit more well-rounded of an approach on offense. They're also shooting really well from the inside. 11 of 14 on layups on the day. And they find the ball back underneath the Childers, who goes up strong through a little contact on the back, able to finish and pull his team back within six points. Able to get the inbound play to Hannah. And now he's facing pressure again. And Southwestern, a good job to bring this one across half court. And they'll get into an offensive set now with about 18 on the shot clock. Hannah with the cut over to Jones. Feet inside. It's Black. Shot no good. Rebound for Gillespie. And he's been all over the boards today. Give him five on the day so far. And that's an offensive foul. Fitzgerald won't like the call, but Paul Fitzgerald just running over Hannah. And the substitution like the fell coming back in. Excuse me, it was Jones that he tucked in. Jones was moving, but when you dip the shoulder and completely run through a guy, you're not going to get the block or the. Uh, the blocking call if you're an offensive player. Meanwhile, and we said if, if Birmingham Southern could cut this down to maybe a four or five point game going into the half, they'd probably feel really good about where they stand considering how bad they shot early on. Looking at it now, down six with possession. A minute and 40 to play here first half. It's right where they want to be. Yeah, especially considering feels like they've really taken a hold of all of the momentum in this one. Shooting it really well from the outside. Also still finding great success in the post. Childers gets the shooter's touch on that sky hook. And all of a sudden, the Panthers only down four. Down four. Childers has six. Now the defense needs to come alive for Birmingham Southern and for Southwestern. They've got to find some way to overcome the pressure and tenacity that Birmingham Southern is showing and find a way maybe even to just get to the line. Leichtfeld put it on the ground. He probably shouldn't have. And that'll be blocked off of him, and it's going to go Birmingham Southern's way. I just felt that when he got the ball in the low block, his first move should have been straight up. And he decided to put it on the ground and try to go for a spin move that I don't think he absolutely needed. Yeah, that dribble actually brought three defenders that swarmed him, wasn't even able to get that ball back up over his head cleanly. Certainly made that contested look a really, really difficult one. Saw it come back off the bottom of the rim, glance off his hand going out of bounds. Sigler down in the corner. He'll kick it back on top. Fitzgerald pulls for three. Front rim no good. Rebounding right there. Childers again, he has eight. 
two-point game. Now Smith on the other end. He's going to lose possession. Birmingham Southern will have it. And we said if they could get this to four or five, they'd have to be ecstatic about where they were. Down 14 with seven minutes to go. And right now an opportunity to tie or take the lead going into the locker room. And all the energy, all the momentum swinging towards this Birmingham Southern side. Seems like everyone in the gym cognizant of that. Sigler pulls from that left wing from deep, knocks it down before the buzzer sounds. Birmingham Southern will go into the half with a one point lead. And my goodness, what a run here for the Panthers. 14 nothing since the last media timeout at 351 left in the first half. Down 14 with under four to play, or excuse me, down 13 with under four to play, and they now lead 40 to 39. Childers has eight. As we take a look at the box score, Persky for Southwestern has nine. He leads all scores, but Childers with eight for the Panthers and was a big part of that comeback. Gillespie with five, Sigler with five, Glover with five, and that's Colin Glover with five. Brother Cameron's got three, Fitzgerald with three. And then on the other side, five points apiece for Hannah, Hester, and Jones. Lechtefeld has six. I believe he's got eight. There's a bucket missing off the stat sheet that they'll fix at the break. And we'll let you know what the scoring situation is for the individuals when we return. But right now, competitive game once again. And we'll be right back here in about 14 minutes here at the Leslie Robinson Thanksgiving Classic.
Welcome back. Start of the second half here in San Antonio. Birmingham Southern with a 40-39 to lead at the break. And it'll be Southwestern in the black going from right to left. And Jones' pass is intercepted by Stewart. Did find the missing bucket on the stat sheet during the halftime break. And Leichtefeld has eight points for the Pirates at halftime. Gillespie coming back strong with a bucket and that extends the lead in the run here for Birmingham Southern. Now a 16-0 run for the Panthers. And for that first set from the Pirates on offense, just trying to force the action a little bit too much. See the same thing there, but better job to get back defensively. And Chris Smith Jr. swats that one emphatically out of bounds, trying to give his team anything to get energetic and get excited about. They try to find their footing in this one again. You know, and that's essentially, I think, how, looking back at it, how Birmingham Southern really started to make their impact. It was just high energy plays, whether it was on offense, you know, a couple of defensive plays. We saw, saw some of the, the replays right after we went to break. And one of them that stood out to me was Jacon Williams interception and layup on one of their press plays. And that really started the spark in the run. Now Fitzgerald, corner threes, got it. The run continues, 19-0. And it's a six point lead now for the Panthers. Yeah, and for that Panther side in that first half, you talked about the energy in those plays. It was really energy play from everyone in a white uniform. And that's continued to start this second half. The Pirates, they need to kind of take that same approach. My goodness. Cameron Glover knocking down the tray. He's got six. The timeout is called. It's an 8-0 run in the first minute 15 since halftime. And it is a 23-0 run here since 351 left in the first half. We'll take a timeout with them. Catch our breath. 48-39, Birmingham Southern. Southwestern with the timeout, looking to stop the bleeding. At this point, stop the hemorrhaging as they need a basket. Maybe in the worst way, Jones, Leichtefeld working down low. Now double team, Gillespie and Stewart, and he's going to draw contact. And Leichtefeld will go to the line. And the foul's going to be on Gillespie, and it's not a field goal, but points opportunity here for Southwestern. They'll, they'll take it any way they can get it at the moment. Yeah, certainly. And a nice opportunity to slow the game down here. Leichtefeld does stop the scoring drought. He's knocking down the first of two free throws. See the second one here. But an, also an opportunity to get back on defense and establish themselves. This is a Birmingham Southern team that's just beaming with confidence right now. Last couple times a couple times down the court, wasn't poor defense from this Pirate side, just better offense, really great shooting from the Panthers right now. Incredibly confident. We talked about the end of that first half as the Panthers team, really energetic from all five white uniforms out on the court. We see the Pirates step in there to take a charge. That sophomore guard, Jacob Hester, who gets the ball back for the Pirates. And right now, that's the type of play they need. They need all five black jerseys zipping around the court. High energy play from all of them. As they look to get back into this game. Oh, Fitzgerald on Jones. 
Weitzfeld coming to set a screen, kick out to Smith, and he'll miss. Gillespie with another board. Kick out Sigler. Three off the mark, but once again, Gillespie grabbing the ball off the rim. Now he'll get this one back in. He'll go to the line to shoot two. That'll be on Persky, who really couldn't do anything else with it. And Persky got stuck in a tough position right there. Looks like a bunch of black jerseys exited the paint after Gillespie kicked that ball out. He found himself wide open under the hoop. Persky got caught in his backside, had to foul him, rather than giving up the easy two points there. And Gillespie knocks down the pair. He's got nine on the day. Three of four shooting from the field. Three of five at the line. He missed the first two of the game, but he's knocked down his last three. In fact, those first two free throws of the game were the only two misses. Three for three for Southwestern. Now five of seven as a team for Birmingham Southern. Smith drives, low block, he's gonna have to kick out. Jones, left hand up and under, can't get it to fall, and the rebound handed over to Fitzgerald. Glover, Sigler, Stewart looking to establish control down on Leichtefeld, but they're gonna kick it around the far side. Now Gillespie, that could have been a charge, and it will be. And again, it's one of those offensive fouls where it's the dipping of the shoulder that these guys are getting called for. And team foul number four here early going against Birmingham Southern. Just 3.01 into the second half. So Spence will check in for him. It's another full unit substitution for the Panthers here. And earlier on in this one, early in that first half, this is the grouping that the Pirate side seemed to have the most success against offensively, but active hands from Panther right there. Caleb Green, who just came into the game as well, knocked that one loose. Birmingham Southern will get the ball back. Colin Glover leading or excuse me, Green, and then Colin Glover in on the far wing. That'll uh, be out of bounds by Childers. And it's Childers who, as we mentioned, Southwestern really got going against this grouping right here, and they had a lead, but they were able to stretch it to 14. And then it was this grouping that also brought Birmingham Southern back on their second shift. And right now, after a couple of minutes have ticked off the clock here in the second half, both teams have picked up the defensive intensity. Birmingham Southern has been able to hold the lead they have as Chris Smith Jr. steps into that 15-footer, rises up and knocks that one down. Saw him have some success with that jumper in the second half of yesterday's game. Look to see if that'll continue for him. Williams, kick out for three. It's rattled in and out. Rebound for Hester. Gives for Persky running the floor. And it'll be an offensive foul on Persky, and that one I'm not quite sure about. I thought that should have been a blocking foul, but it'll go against Persky. As they say that. Yeah, I'd agree with you. It doesn't look like he had established legal guarding position, but I think it might be on that elbow that he oh, yes. swung up high. There you go. Looks Missed. Like he caught Caleb Green in the chin right there. Missed that live, but you can see on your screen there, lower corner, Green still down on the court from that elbow. An unintentional elbow, but elbow nonetheless. And see the game stats there, 42.9% field goal percentage. Talked about it during the break. They were shooting 29% at one point midway through the first half, now up to 42% as a team. They were actually up to about 46% earlier. And just absolutely magnificent turnaround for Birmingham Southern. And so they may be... I don't think they're, I think they've rolled it just incidental contact with the elbow, so I don't think they're going to look at anything 
further. Um, but just an absolute fantastic turnaround here for Birmingham Southern. Now we see if on the other side of it, Southwestern can kind of do what Birmingham Southern did in the first half. Yeah, for Southwestern, see that their field goal percentage still at 50%, shooting well above 40% from three. So those are great numbers. Turnovers in a similar spot, but it's really been the control of this Birmingham Southern team on the offensive glass. They have 27 rebounds as opposed to the Pirates 16. That difference entirely made up of offensive rebounds. Birmingham Southern with 11 more. Had some success with second chance, second chance points to this point, but a lot more physical down low from the guys in white today. Williams down in the corner. And Spence low block, Childers up to the elbow. And they'll kick over, try to find Childers, and it's going to be stolen away by Hannah. And he stays down on the floor. Jones will continue to run. That's blocked by Childers. And then Colin Glover is going to get fouled by Smith Jr. up around midcourt. And Maybe a whistle here and a small break will give everybody a chance to reset as we had players down at every aspect of the court. We had them on the far left side, middle, and the far right side. Marito in at guard, top of the key. Spence, Williams. And a travel. And the earlier foul, the third team foul against Southwestern for Smith, his second. Glover. All the way to the rack, can't get it to fall. Childers will pull down the board. Kick out for Williams, top of the key three, front of the rim, no good. And this will stay with Birmingham Southern. Inbound pass goes to Garrido, top of the key. It throws inside for Childers. And he's blocked by Leichtefeld, but they're going to say Leichtfeld got a little bit too much of the arm. And to the line will be the 6'8 forward junior out of Madison, Alabama, Josh Childers. His first trip to the line today, and it's going to rattle out. And the first miss since the first two free throws of the afternoon from either side. But for Birmingham Southern, this possession, returning to what they've done best on the day, going into Childers on the post. Played a big role in that first half, especially down the stretch. Saw him score eight points in that first half. The Pirates come back down the court. Leichtefeld able to get that bucket. But that last possession, and Childers caught it down low. Leichtefeld backed off almost immediately. This Panthers team hasn't been met with much resistance in the post, but they've also shot it really, really well from the outside today. Colin Glover knocking down the three, pushing that lead to eight. One off their largest lead, which they had just a moment ago. And earlier on that Leichtefeld play, one of the things I saw, Sam Lacey with the quarterback vision, tossing that one up ahead. And that's the type of play he gives you. It's a lot of intensity out of Lacey. We saw earlier on the technical, maybe a little too much intensity at times, but he's going to energize the Pirates team and push them forward. Now it's Jones with the little floater. Right city to do it in, but couldn't pull it off. Kane, corner three, no good. Leichtfeld pulls down the board and Lacey maybe thought about tossing it all the way down again. Thinks better of it. Now Leichtefeld, low block. He's got the position. He's got the bucket. Now maybe the time for Southwestern to turn this around down six. Yeah, and Leichtefeld pushes his scoring total to 14 on the day. It's a pirate side that as things come down the stretch, they're going to need to look to someone 
to really step up. Leichtefeld's been that player so far today. Persky currently on the bench at the moment, was their leading scorer in the game yesterday. Had 22 points on eight of 13 shooting. He's been held in check, only nine on four of eight today. And a lot of that was early on. The possession staying here with Birmingham Southern, 20 on the shot clock. Corner three for Green, or excuse me, for Kane, and Kane knocks it down. Him and Kane with his second three. And that's going to be a foul on Tassant, or excuse me, not Tassant, that's on uh, Tulitas. Tuliata is just a little bit too aggressive right there. Cognizant of the shot clock winding down. Pirates had the ball in the backcourt for close to 10 seconds there. He's trying to force the turnover, but a little, much, little bit too much body contact as Leichtefeld with a nice up and under. Great footwork underneath the basket for the big man. Now with 16 on the day, he leads this Pirate side. He actually leads all scorers on the day. Gillespie for the Panthers with nine leading the way. A much more spread out scoring effort from the Birmingham Southern side. Again, Gillespie with nine. Glover and Childers both with eight off the bench. And then three players currently with six points. That's Fitzgerald, Glover, and Kane for the Panthers. And 12.38 left to play in the only game in the NCAA that's going to feature... Both players wearing number 23, starting their last names with T-O-U. We'll get Elias on that one to see if that's ever happened before. Birmingham Southern bringing it across. Garrido, a little too strong with the pass into Stewart. And we'll see this full court action. And it's Tulatos and Toussaint matching up and Southwestern getting the ball out in front. Now Leichtefeld on Stewart. And the big battle down low going to Leichtefeld. Yeah, He's got Leichtefeld. 16. Leichtefeld not really favoring the contact down low. As Tuliotis' three is short, hits the front rim, and get a foul on the Pirates right here. That little go against number 23, Leo Toussaint. Possession will remain with the Panthers, but Leichtefeld Shine away from contact on pretty much every possession prior to that one. Really back short up to get into good position right underneath the basket. But they find Kane in the corner again. That one just rims out. Now Lacey far side for Southwestern. Taking it all by himself to the opposite low block. He'll finally give it back up. It's Hester top of the key. Shot clock at 15. And it takes that one from just inside 15 feet and left side of the court. He knocks it down to bring the Pirates within three. Now Glover with the ball up top. He saw it open again, might have shuffled his feet, but no call. And we'll reset the offense. Drive and an aggressive move to the basket right there from Glover. And foul will go against the Pirates there get called for a block. We'll take another time out on the court here. We'll take it with you.
11.20 left here in the second half. Three-point game, Birmingham Southern. Cameron Glover at the line trying to extend the lead. One and one situation for Glover. And took us to about four minutes in the first half before either team got to a one and one situation. We're there already here, and it will be both ways as Birmingham Southern with 16 fouls as well. Their next foul will be a one and one. And Glover knocking down the first, and he'll earn the second. Pair of free throws makes it a five-point lead. Now the full-court press once again. Yeah, we talked about it earlier in the half for the Pirates. Mike DeFeld stepping up, leading the way today as Persky struggled and now sits on the bench with four fouls. Question now as Mike DeFeld takes a seat and a little bit of a rest, who's going to step up? Jones short on that three-point attempt from the right wing. Glover all the way, Stewart with the follow, and gets his own rebound, knocks down the shot. So, took three attempts to get two points, but Birmingham Southern will take it. And then a foul here against Kane on the far end. Again, Pirates also in the bonus with under 11 minutes to go in this first half. It's Jacob Hester stepping to the line. He misses the front end of the one and one. Panthers control and come back the other way. That's Glover getting into the paint. He fill, feeds it down low to Childers. He mishandles that one. That's off. The Pirates and the Panthers will retain possession as Leichtefeld and Preston Hanna return to the court now. Just under 10.30 to go in the second half here. Preston Hanna left Childers wide open underneath the basket but recovered well to get the block cleanly from behind. Another stoppage of play here. Gillespie's going to get called for a foul. He's questioning what exactly happened, talking to the ref right now. But again, Hester will step to the line. Another one and one opportunity for Hester who just missed the front end of his last trip to the line. This time he earns the second and brings the Pirates back within six. Second one also good for Hester. Now this Pirate side really going to need some stops defensively. Feed the ball down low in the middle to Gillespie who immediately swings it back out to Sigler who couldn't handle the pass, hit him right in the hands but glance between them. The Pirates will gain possession and will push, push it down the court just a little bit. They'll break the press immediately. And across is over, steps back for a long two, but he'll hit that. And the Pirates all of a sudden back within three after going down seven. Far side kick out, Sigler goes inside now for Stewart, or Gillespie, excuse me, Gillespie's fouled hard by Leichtefeld. similar position that we saw the Pirates in yesterday. Were able to claw back into the game late, but there was just the plateau that they hit. They couldn't quite get over the hill. So we saw them a little earlier in the half get to this three-point deficit. Panthers pulled back ahead by seven. See the Pirates down three again now. So we'll see if they can do better today 
to get over the hill. And the second free throw falls for Gillespie, and he's now into double figures. The first Panther with 10. He's gotten a barrage of scoring from all over. Meanwhile, Lichtfeld with 18 of the 57 for Southwestern. But Smith missing the dunk. That one goes in and out. Yeah, and you have to wonder what exactly happened right there. Smith certainly elevated high enough to throw that one down. Perhaps it just slipped out of his hands as there were a couple of white jerseys in the lane, a lot of traffic that he had to go through on that attempt. Mike felt looking for the jump ball situation, but he's going to get called for, or excuse me, it's going to be Hester with the foul. So third foul, and team foul number nine, but next one will be two, two shots, so this will be one and one here for Childers. Knocks down the first. Makes it a pair in the lead, ballooning to six. Inside for Smith. This time he doesn't miss the dunk. Fantastic move on the baseline cut for Charles Chris Smith Jr. Yeah, and when he elevated that time, kind of had the feeling that he was going to make sure that that one fell all the way through the bottom of the net, a lot more confident, taking off there, and an emphatic finish over the top of the defender. And then back on the defensive side, Smith tapping that one over to his teammate for the rebound. And Sigler coming up twice on misses. Four-point game, and they've given the back door to Smith once again. It's three straight possessions that they have not covered Smith on the back door, and that time that one's slipping out of his hands. It's percentage-wise worked out okay for Birmingham Southern, but certainly provides the Pirates with a big momentum swing, although obviously not able to come away with points on that possession. Certainly seemed to be a little bit out of sorts there. There was some frustration visibly from Jones and Leichtefeld earlier on in that possession. Birmingham Southern just working it around. They've got Fitz top of the key. Fitzgerald knocking, or shooting the three, and had it wide open, but he hits the front rim. Yeah, and a little bit of indecisiveness from the Panthers right there. No one really looking to be the aggressor and take the ball to the hole. A little bit of a settle right there. The three-point attempt from Fitzgerald on the outside, although he is two for five from range on the day. And we'll have reached 744 left here in the second. We'll take the media timeout. We'll be right back in just a moment. So Jones to the line for two. Team down four. And he knocks down the first of two. Jones now six points on the day. Just two of seven from the field. He continues to penetrate. 
get to has gotten to the line now for the first time and he knocks down the pair. So we'll see how the last seven and a half minutes of this game unfold. I would have to imagine with the game being so close at this moment that free throws have got to be a big part of the remaining part of this game. And Leichtefeld is going to get called for the foul on Stewart. And the Southwestern crowd that is driven down from north of Austin does not like the call against their big man, his third personal. Yeah, it looked like Leichtefeld tried to pull the chair on Stewart, perhaps had that arm wrapped around him. These refs seeing that, interpreting it as a pull down. Stewart steps up to the line, hits the first of two shots now that the Panthers are in the double bonus. Trying to make a two possession game, and he does. And Stewart with his sixth point of the game. A little surprising as so much of the offense at various times today has flown through him. Just two of six on the field. Smith working with Hannah, and Hannah take that NBA range three, misses from the top of the key. Smith, turnaround jumper, had like the field right there when he spun back the other way. Yeah, it and looked like he landed with his back to the basket right there. Didn't look like there was anybody between him or like the field. Ended up spinning probably in the worst direction, taking himself a little bit further away from the basket and allowing the defense to recover just a little bit. Like the fellow will go back to work underneath. And Stewart with the big body D down low. The two big men banging down pretty much all game long. Bring Gillespie into that ca category as well. Seeing some good low block play today both offensively and defensively. Williams from the elbow three, no good. Lacey push it forward, has Hannah. He's gonna take it all the way to the rack. Can't make it a three point play opportunity, but he'll go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, and for this pirate side, obviously like the playing a huge role in this one, 18 points on eight of 11 shooting on the day, but you have to feel like they're gonna need someone to step up in their backcourt. Jones played really well yesterday, was four of eight on the day, finishing with 11 points. Now Hannah in two double figures. He's got 10 on four of six shooting, one of two of downtown, and drained his first free throw right there, his second. Also true, he's got 11. Two-point lead for the Panthers. Pirates dropping to the 2 3. Smith on coverage in the far wing as Colin Glover's three off the mark. Now, Hannah, team down two. Jones kick it around. Lacey, he doesn't have a bucket yet. First, his three point attempt, no good. His first one might have given him the team lead, but he dumps off the assist inside to Chris Smith, and we are tied at 65. Yeah, and it's just a great find from Lacey right there. Awesome job following his own shot, recognizing that it was a little bit short, but back the other way, like clockwork, Caleb Green steps into the three on the right wing and knocks it down. And the freshman from Huntsville will send us to a timeout, 68-65. Southwestern's taking a 30-second timeout. Let's do a quick recap on individual scoring here. As you can see, some of the replays here pop out three for Caleb Green. Childers and Gillespie with 10 apiece for the Panthers. Glover, it'll be uh, Colin Glover with eight. His brother Cameron also with eight. So, and then on the other side of it, you mentioned earlier, Persky with nine in the first half. Hester has seven. Jones has seven. Chris Smith with nine. A lot of that coming here late. Hannah with 11 and Leichtefeld with 18. Hester, or excuse me, um, Lacey, Jones, Smith, Hannah, Leichtefeld, for Southwestern, Fitzgerald, Glover, Gillespie, Sigler, and Childers, and it'll be Cameron Glover on court right now for the Panthers. Run, 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 
And a cross over dribble, takes it all the way, and unbelievable block by Childers. Kind of pinned it against the bottom rubber of the glass. Yeah, it's a pretty spectacular D from the big men of this Birmingham Southern squad. That was Gillespie that was checking Hannah on the outside, and he just handed it off to his counterpart in the front court. Childers came over and pinned that one against the backboard. Childers losing the dribble down low, then had to go up with it. Couldn't get a good handle. It's an approach that this Birmingham Southern side's taken in much of this one deploying some bigger bodies out in the front, out in the backcourt, excuse me, on these guards of Southwestern. It's worked really well. It's another player that we've seen in that position, Paul Fitzgerald, rejecting that one. Fitzgerald with the emphatic block and then loses the handles, trying to cut through. So this will be ball back to Southwestern and Persky looking to check in. He'll go in for Lacey, and it'll be Hester in for Hannah. Persky, obviously, the individual to watch here, see if he can provide a spark offensively, but also have to be cognizant of the four fouls that he has on the day. 4.30, still a long way to go in this one. And I'd say Southwestern has done well in his absence, but they're hoping they can do a little bit better with him on the floor. He had moments of brilliance yesterday, and then moments where you and I thought that maybe he was trying to carry the team a little bit too much all on his own. And they've got collective scoring from almost everybody out on the court right now. And Smith will lose the handle to Sigler. Childers pushing up Fitzgerald down in the corner for Cameron Glover. He'll go cross court back to Sigler, started it all. That one's cleaned up by Childers, and Childers with 12 now, he leads yeah. all Panthers. For Birmingham Southern, that now pushes their offensive rebound total to 19 on the day, 43 total rebounds, as opposed to Southwestern's 28. So total control of the boards on the day for Birmingham Southern. Jones maybe trying to do a little too much, trying to throw that cross court pass. And that'll take us 335, the final media timeout. Don't go anywhere. This is where Birmingham Southern turned it on in the first half with just over three and a half to play, wiping out a 13 point lead right before the break in the final three and a half. Let's see what Birmingham Southern and Southwestern have for us left in store in the final 200 plus seconds when we return. Seventy to sixty-five. It will be Gillespie looking to inbounds. He's got Cameron Glover in the backcourt. Be Persky picking him up as he looks across the line. Two-ball action. Persky getting a hand on it. It's Gillespie's pass maybe a little lazy over the top, and now Birmingham Southern fifteen on the shot clock, able to get into an offensive set. Sigler back to the top of the key. It's Fitzgerald. Back to Sigler looking inside. Had shoulders, but he's going to take it and roll around. Cameron Glover, corner three. Side iron, no good, but nobody blocking out Fitzgerald in 20th. Offensive board of the day for the Panthers. And that will be an extra two points as Sigler is knocking down the mid-range jumper from the baseline. Yeah, an incredible lapse right there from the Pirates. Looked like they started that possession in a, in a zone defense, but sank back into that man. So to have a body not checked right there, unfortunate, led to that second chance basket. But Persky coming back down the other end, 
for that too. The Pirates will get the ball right back after the Panthers called for an offensive foul right there. Offensive foul won't lead to a shooter, I believe. Yeah, so the foul on Sigler is third, and we're in a double bonus, so it looks like it's going to be Hester going to the line. Double figures now for Persky. He's got 11. I believe his first two here in the second half. Two of four now from the line for Jacob Hester. And stuck on seven points. Also has three rebounds and three assists. This to draw it to four. He does. He's got eight. 72. 72-68 now. Scoreboard is off. Hannah brings it back down the other way for the Pirates. Looking to get the ball to Persky out front, but he picks up his dribble far away from the basket. Eventually does get to Persky. He kicks it to Hester in the corner with an open three, and he knocks it down. Panthers within one now with just under two minutes remaining here. Last four have gone to Hester. He's got 11. And then Jones with his fourth steal of the day. It's a three-on-one. Hester will give it back to Persky. And the lead to the Pirates, 73-72, 100 seconds left. Almost the exact opposite of what we saw in the first half, the last couple of minutes. The Panthers coming alive in that first half, but the Pirates really catching fire here as they take the one point lead, but it's an untimely foul for Jones. Far from the basket, Fitzgerald was catching the ball with his back turned. Jones landing, coming in a little bit underneath Jones landing spot, so he'll come to the free throw line now in the double bonus, he'll shoot two. It's an 8-0 run over the last minute seven. Fitzgerald with another opportunity to tie after he misses the front end of the two. Stewart in for Childers. He's got Gillespie down low with him against Persky and Leichtefeld. And the game is tied with a minute 34 to play. Sigler on Jones as he brings it across midcourt. Birmingham Southern here, you have to expect the ball to be in Persky's hands, but you certainly can't forget about Leichtefeld, who's played a huge role in the entirety of this game, looking to get the ball to him now. And Glover doing a great job defending Persky. Shot clock at four, and, and he's going to be turned over. Now Birmingham Southern in control with a minute to play. But they turn that one back around. Gillespie's hands are good enough to keep it from going out. And he'll draw the foul against Leichtefeld. And that'll be four on Leichtefeld. So he and Persky both with four. And that's big only in the sense that if we get to a situation where you're playing for the win or overtime, it might change what Southwestern tries to do knowing that both of their big men down low are one foul away from being done for the day. Lesby's first one rolls through, and it's a one-point lead. Back iron no good. Stewart tries to go for it, and they're going to say it's off of Stewart. So possession now for the Pirates. 55 seconds left. And they're going to go look at that last play on the monitor. And we'll take a break and be right back.
All right, and a huge thank you to the students down in the room on those replays. The officials, even with the multiple cameras, I, we looked at it up here, and Luke and I thinking that maybe on first glance it looked like Persky was the one that touched it last, but then looked like maybe Stewart had touched it. I think the officials couldn't have confirmation, so they'll go with the call. And coming down the other end, Persky going to be blocked by Fitzgerald. We'll see what the official stats say. And Fitzgerald comes down with the rebound. 13-second differential between the shot and the game clock. Birmingham Southern with a one-point lead. And Southwestern willing to go with their defense. Timeout, Birmingham Southern as the shot is good. And Stewart now with eight points on the day. And a three-point lead. And even now with four fouls apiece for Leichtfeld and Persky, you've got no choice. You've got to at least go for the tie if you are Southwestern to even think about overtime. But might we see a quick two and a foul? I think it's certainly possible. Southwestern only 13 attempts from deep on the day as opposed to 33 for this Birmingham Southern side. So, I mean, you look at it, Jones one for three, Hester two for three, Anna one for two, Persky one of one on the day. I don't think the, the foul is a bad option if you're Birmingham Southern right here, try and take away the opportunity to tie the game. See the replay right there. Jones trying to undercut that one just a little bit late. Couldn't elevate to challenge that shot. And Persky from behind. Stewart did just enough to keep him out of position. And kiss that one off the glass. So I think they were looking at the time of the basket to see if they needed to adjust the clock. Any. And I think 16.5, they're going to change it. Yeah, 17.3 when it went through the rim. As the ball should stop on a made basket under two minutes. So they're going to add a little bit more time back for Southwestern here. Now, they said 17 seconds. If they're going to go for two and then foul, they've got to go quickly. And they're going to try it for three. It's Hester, and he knocks it down. 76 all. And we're going to have four seconds. Guys in the control room should roll that back because they're going to look at the time when that went through the, the basket. We'll take a quick break and be right back with you for the conclusion here in just a second. And they have added 2.1 tenths back to the clock. So 6.0 when that ball went through. Just a great shot from Hester right there. Found him on the dribble handoff. He got his feet set. It was the defender in front of him. It was well contested. He double pumped right there, but was still able to find the bottom of the net. I believe six seconds on the clock for Birmingham Southern in a game that's not a at 76 all. Yeah, and I was a little surprised. I mean, we talked about it earlier, only 13 shots from downtown. Now they're 6 of 14. They were 5 of 13. You know, they haven't really relied on the three-pointer all day long, but the confidence in Hester to take it, and if it was going to be anybody, it's Hester. He was 2 for 3 at that point for the day. He's now 3 of 4, 14 points here in this contest. He's leading all, or well, Leichtenfeld's got 18, but he's leading all the rest of his teammates now with 14 points, one ahead of Persky and three ahead of Hannah. You know, now Southwestern's called the backup double timeout here to kind of give themselves a little bit of extra talking time, how they're gonna come out on defense. They wisely let Birmingham Southern walk out onto the floor to see who was out there before they called the timeout for this Pirates team. Interesting to see who they'll bring out. Neither 
Weichtefeld off the court for now, but Persky will make the appearance defensively. Both players for the Pirates in a little bit of foul trouble. So the tie game certainly assumed that they'd be playing for overtime. Both teams in the double bonus right here. Want to play aggressive defense, but don't want to send the opposition to the free throw line. There's going to be a foul against Birmingham Southern. Looks like it's going to be on that screen that was set. Should not send anyone to the free throw line. And they're going to check. Because it was an offensive foul. And they're going to check the clock once again. We'll take a quick break, let them talk to the room, and we'll be right back. So the foul called Tuliatos 3.8 seconds left. And now Southwestern with an opportunity. This game's going to end in heartbreak for one of these two squads who have both done what they've needed to do in a lot of ways to take this victory. And Persky stops. The jumper, good. And there's going to be time left on the clock. So it's not over just yet, but there will be a few tenths of the second. I'm going to check the control room once again, and we'll take a break so they can talk and see what time is left, but we'll be right back. All right, so you can argue about whether it should have been .3 or .2, but they've said .2, and that means that for all intents and purposes, this one is done unless you get a tip play, but you cannot catch and shoot. You're yeah, going to have to go the length. Returning to that play, Pirates set up Persky in the front court all by himself. A little bit of distraction in the back court. The Panthers will get ready to throw this one deep. With the touch, that'll let time run off. But again, Persky in the front court caught it. Great presence of mind to get to the basket, get the defender off his feet, recognizing there was plenty of time to get that bucket to go. And, and apologies as they take the score off this, the, the, the thing. 78-76, your final here, Southwestern victorious. 18 points from Leichtefeld, 15 from Persky, including the go-ahead basket at the very end, 14 from Hester, 11 from Hannah. On the other side for Birmingham Southern, a fantastic effort in defeat, 12 points from Childers, 11 from Gillespie, 8 for Glover, for both Glovers, and 7 for Fitzgerald. And they will depart having lost both games here at the Leslie Robinson Classic Southwestern going 1-1. One but just a phenomenal game here and happy to bring it to you. And we should hopefully have one more left in us. Carlton and Trinity taking place in about 20 minutes time. And we're going to jump off air now and be back for that game here about 4.05. Thank you for tuning in and have a wonderful rest of your Saturday.